Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome. My name, of course, is Over the Potato, and here we check out the latest and the greatest strategy games each and every day of the week. Today is a very exciting day indeed, because I get to show you Manor Lords. That's right, this is the most anticipated upcoming city builder. In fact, I think it is actually the most wishlisted game on Steam right now. And this is the early access release version that I get to show to you. Let's jump into the game and see what we have got in store. Now, a uh, little bit of a little bit of a character creation phase. I'm not going to spend too much time on this. Uh, this guy looks pretty cool. Uh, coat of arms. Uh, what looks potatoey? Sure, this looks like uh, this looks like the holy hand grenade from Monty Python's. Let's go. Orange, there we go, and uh, symbol blue. Nice, I, I, I don't actually, you know what, I actually don't hate that at all. Let's rock and roll with that uh, because we can jump into things. Now, uh, there are three sort of like rough scenarios. I'm going to be playing on the restoring the peace scenario. This has an objective of domination. We need to conquer all of the different regions, and that is just fine. Now, this is a city builder, but it's also a kingdom builder. It's a kingdom sort of management style game, and it is, I guess, very very thorough, very intricate, uh, and very detailed. So, uh, this is the world. As ever, I'll break down what the heck is happening. Uh, this is quite a complex game, but it is made of lots of little chunks, which I am going to try and explain, um, and hopefully we'll get through it. Anyway, we've got a new message here. Victory condition, dominance. Build up your town, your manor, and when ready, press claims towards regions owned by your opponents. Once a claim has been pressed, be ready for battle. Now, uh, there was a demo of this game that I played uh, quite a while ago. The demo had no combat. This game has combat in. This game has combat. This game has nearly everything. So, uh, this is the world that we inhabit. Uh, and if I keep zooming out, you can actually start to see the the kingdom. Uh, can I rename my kingdom? I'd like to. I'd like to do that. Um, although I'm not actually. Yeah, there we go. Let's do that. Uh, let's let's rename the kingdom. There we go. Potato, Potatoville. Technically, it's more than a ville, but anyway, that doesn't matter. We'll come back to this a little bit later on. The point is, we start in this region here. Uh, we need to try and take over. We need to try and take over all of it. That's the objective, at least for this specific scenario. Uh, to do that, uh, we need to build up a town and we need to expand. We start with pretty much nothing. We start with uh, some tents. We start with a hitching post, some supplies, and some more supplies. And that's pretty much it. Up in the top right-hand corner over here, we've got our construction materials, food, fuel, crops, uh, crafting materials, basically all of our materials. Uh, we have got our treasury, our annual royal tax, our influence, which is very important when uh, pressing claims, and we also have king's favor. Uh, we got a little sort of seasonal uh, marker down in the bottom right-hand corner here. Very, very important because this game follows the seasons pretty accurately, which means that we need to be getting, you know, crops in the ground at certain times. We need to be harvesting at certain times. Uh, we need to be using firewood in the winter, all of that sort of stuff. And then I would say the most important part of the screen right now is up here. Now, uh, we'll sort of go through this uh, as we go, but we've got an approval rating, public order rating, regional wealth, uh, livestock, number of months before supplies run out. That's pretty cool. We've got a population. None of that really matters. None of this really matters uh, in comparison to what uh, to what is happening over here. So this is the number of unassigned families that we have. And uh, people don't really work individually. They work in families. Um, and so we assign families to jobs. Uh, so we've got five families, but we've got a population of 10 uh, split between eight adults, two kids. That's kind of how that's kind of how it happens. Okay, with that out of the way, let's see if we can actually get building. Uh, there's a couple of different buildings that we're going to want to build pretty much immediately. Uh, and in fact, there's a lot of buildings that we can build sort of straight from the get-go. There's a couple that are locked, but that's okay. We can grow our village and we can unlock them in due course. Uh, but what I think I want to do is I want to sketch out a a rough sort of road. Uh, we've got an iron rich deposit over there. We've got a clay deposit over here, wild animals over there, a berry deposit looking very, very juicy. And we've got a stone deposit over here. Now there's no real, um, there's no real rationale or reason as to where we have to sort of start our city. Uh, but I'm going to roughly pencil in 
a bit of a long road because I kind of like the idea of building a city in this opening somewhere. So let's sort of flesh out, there we go, the very sort of rough, the rough lines of what I would like a city to look like. Uh, it doesn't need to be anything special, doesn't need to be particularly well designed, just needs to be a little bit of a skeleton road structure that we can work to. Okay, so now that we've got some roads in place, let's get the very most important buildings down, typically found in the gathering category. A logging camp. Workers fell nearby trees to produce timber. It works exactly as you would anticipate. We plonk this down over here. Boom, that is great. Uh, woodcutter's Lodge for firewood. We're not going to need that quite yet. A saw pit. We are going to need a saw pit. We only have six timber at the moment, though, so uh, we maybe want to be a little bit careful about that. Uh, I'm going to get a hunting camp, and where were the wild animals? There's wild animals over here. Um, if I build this hunter's camp in the uh, wild animal area, then that unfortunately means that the animals are going to disappear. But no matter, we can build it uh, sort of on the outskirts of town and have absolutely no issues with that. And the Forager Hut, uh, with its proximity to berries, I think we're going to place over here. I would like to not uproot any trees in order to uh, to continue with construction. That is fine. Okay, so that's the sort of basics that we need to get done. Um, we will place these other buildings in due course, but that is fine. Uh, Mining-wise, we can get a Stonecutter Camp. I don't think that we actually need a Stonecutter Camp at the moment. We've got 20 stone in the bank. Uh, logistics... Logistics happen kind of interestingly in this game. So we have a hitching post already, and at that hitching post, we can actually see that we have an oxen. The interesting thing about... In fact, you know what? I should let the, uh, I should let the game build. I should let the game go. There we go. Uh, families, if they're unassigned, will just uh, work on construction, and they're going to move the goods around. Now, the interesting thing about logistics in this game is that this oxen is kind of a communal oxen and will do a lot of the heavy lifting for the village for, well, a long time until I get an additional oxen. Um, you can see him heading over here. There we go. Attaching to a log. Fantastic. And you're going to take that to where it needs to go. It's pretty legit in that uh, in that regard, which uh, I absolutely love. Another feature of the game that I absolutely love is the way that it handles um, well fields and houses. Uh, we'll start with uh, we'll start with houses. Uh, we basically build plots. We don't actually necessarily build specific houses. So what we can do is we can actually say to the game, "Hey, um, also I love the fact that it's just so responsive and it feels so so nice. Uh, we are going to have houses fronting onto this area." Uh, we're going to drag them right back up to about here. And look at that. We are going to zone five houses along this entire area. Now, we don't actually have enough goods to do this, uh, which is a little bit of a bummer. We need 10... Uh, we need 10 logs, but you get the picture. We can, we can do this relatively simply. And in fact, for now, I think we'll do something like this. Uh, plot's too small. Let's go a little bit bigger. Not enough goods. We can literally only build two houses at the moment. Well, that's... That's unfortunate. Uh, let's wait until we have a few more logs then. No, no worries at all. I'm happy to, I'm happy to wait. Let's go into four times speed and let's move right ahead. And we should be able to get all of that done as soon as our ox has moved all of the, uh, the bits and bobs into the correct positions. We've got a couple of little warnings up here. Exposed goods at the moment. Yeah, everything is kind of out in the open. We'll get that fixed. And our uh, goods from the pantry are also out. So we need to build a granary and a storehouse. And the quicker we're able to do that, the better. Now, the logging camp has been completed. Remember what I said about families? We can assign those families. And suddenly, we have got three assigned families and two unassigned families. Now, uh, in the early game, I think it's really, really important to get as much uh, timber as we possibly can. So that is what I'm going to be focusing on. Uh, three of my families being allocated towards uh, logging makes absolutely 100% sense to me. And of course, we'll get a forager up and running and we'll get a hunting camp up and running. And we'll get one person assigned over there. And we'll get another person assigned over here as soon as we possibly can. Now, we're up to five timber, but I need a little bit more timber. I need a little bit more timber, and that's the only thing that I'm going to be satisfied with, I'm afraid. More timber. So if we can get just a little bit, then that would suit me just fine. Now, some buildings have upgrades. I don't think any... I don't think any of these buildings have upgrades, no. Uh, but we can see that they've got storage sort of values right over there. Ooh, a new message. What's this? I've heard of your renown... I only seek to defend my rights and my honor against those who would wrong me. I hope you will not judge me by the rumors and slanders that some may spread about me. Signed and sealed by my own seal, uh, Hildbolt von Burent. 
Okay, uh, we got two options here, and this will actually allow us to explore diplomacy. Uh, there's a couple of different things that we can that we can do. Uh, at the moment, we have no influence, so all we can do uh, is drag and drop this paragraph into the uh, into the letter and send it back. Uh, this is my opponent, by the way. Uh, we can interact with him if we want to. He has these two bits of land, whilst I have Potatoville. Also, there's a bunch of different resources on the map, but you probably figured that out already by now, so that is good. Right, uh, two times speed, or indeed maybe even more. I want to get I want to get moving with houses. So what's really really important, at least in the uh, early stages of the game, is to increase our approval rating. You can see the modifiers to our approval rating right there. Our, our approval rating. It's homelessness. Basically, if I'm able to solve homelessness, then we will be fine. Uh, so let's let's actually get plot too small. It's only a marginally too small. Problem is, if I make it too much bigger, then I'm not going to have the additional space at the other side that I want to have. There we go. Let's maybe make it about that size. Sure. Okay. Let's get that zoned in. I think that's pretty decent. Uh, I don't want it to be too big. No, I want the frontage to be over here, over there. And the plot's a little bit too small. We can, we can rework that. Um, probably a little bit too long on the front. Okay, that's interesting. We can actually add a little bit of extra, a little bit of extra real estate to the, to the front there. We can also uh, turn that snapping off, I believe, so we don't necessarily have to snap to the roads. Okay, let's let's do this. Let's do this for now. Let's do this for now. That's going to be a fourth house, so that's going to be nice. We've got four under construction, and let's see if we can try and do. Try and do something similar over here. Uh, yeah, just a small enough space to be inconvenient, but no matter. We can, we can, we can, we can work with other spaces. There's, you know, there's no, there's no commitment necessary to uh, to anything here. Let's go into multiple times speed so that I can get a little bit more, a little bit more cash. Also, I would quite like to demonstrate one of the additional features of the game. Up to here and yes this is what we want to see so um this is three houses with additional expansion plots on the back side and this is really really cool for a couple of reasons uh basically we can get specific house upgrades that will allow us to do some special things um the forager hut by the way uh, for example has got an upgrade we don't have the resources to make it but it allows the forager hut to grow herbs which is fine um, that's quite a nice that's quite a nice thing to have anyway we're solving um, we're solving homelessness right here we've got three basic houses we got a slightly more uh, complicated uh, house and then we have got three uh, three extra nice houses which is really really cool okay there was a little warning that sort of flashed up there uh, that I would like to address very very quickly uh, and that is a marketplace a marketplace is where everybody sells their goods and their wares and honestly, Getting a marketplace down, uh, which is, works in exactly the same way that a uh, that a house does, um, you sort of just draw the zone, and people are able to set up marketplaces as and when they want if they have goods to sell, which I think is just a phenomenally cool sort of feature. So that's really really nice. Uh, we've got a well provides drinking water uh, to plots, but can only be placed on underground water sources. You know what? Let's get that. Uh, let's get that over here. Snap to roads. Sure, we'll zone that over there. Very, very nice. And then the other thing that I would like to get is a storehouse and a granary. And I think punting them sort of both around this area would be kind of nice. Although I don't think I actually have the capability to squeeze that in there. So you know what, let's get the granary over there, let's get the storehouse. I mean, ideally as central to town as we can. Let's go there. Sure, I think that's fine. Now, again, we only have one family that is allocated to construction. Let's put this as a low-priority building, let's put this as a low-priority building, and then let's jump into multiple times speed, because I have a limited amount of time to show you uh, all of the cool stuff that this game has to offer. 
Okay, we have a plot that is up and running. That is great. Family members join one of the settlers. That's amazing. Look at that. Our population is actually increasing. That means that there's going to be more people to do more things, and we're going to be able to build stuff and do stuff much faster. Now, I'm going to crank down the number of families that we have working in the uh, logging camp, assign one to the forager camp. That should theoretically allow us to get a few additional food resources we got a little bit of bread uh, we got a few berries coming in we got a little bit of meat coming in we'll get vegetables we'll get eggs we'll get apples we'll get honey we'll get the whole you know the whole thing don't worry about it it's just a matter of time okay uh look at this so because this plot is slightly different it's slightly bigger you remember that little sort of uh, plus icon that uh, appeared over there uh, we can actually expand the living space here it doubles the maximum family count for this specific plot we can also upgrade it uh, but we haven't actually hit all of the requirements needed uh, for example we don't have water access quite yet because that is still being built yada 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 we'll get there don't worry okay we still have two families that are uh, that are homeless at the moment but that is going to be rectified fairly soon the real issue that we have is, yeah, exposed stocks are getting soaked. Yeah, that's over here and over here as well. The issue that we have is that we don't have the granary up and running yet. Uh, we're working on it, don't worry. We're working on it. But the real issue uh, is that we just don't have enough families, you know? We just don't have enough families needed to do all of the jobs that we need to get done. The way that we, the way that we attract families, firstly, is by having a high approval rating, and secondly, is having available houses. So what I have done to create a little bit of a, an extra supply of houses, we should have two spare houses at the end of the day, uh, is hopefully to try and attract some additional people to the village. Aha! Look at that. Settlement level increased. New development point for Potatoville. Very, very nice. Uh, so we're a small village at the moment. I think it was literally just five basic plots. Yeah, five, five basic plots uh, that are required to move up to a small village. Medium village is the next one. That means that we need to get two level two or higher plots uh, in Potatoville, which is quite all right. Now, um, there's some there's some stuff going on here. Uh, we've got a single development point. Uh, there are kind of like three trees over here. There's like policy trees. Uh, we can't sign any policies at the moment. There's a production tab. We'll see what that does, I guess. Uh, but we can get some um, we can get some nice little bonuses here. Um, so for example, uh, add a plowing station enables oxen at the farmhouse. Uh, employing oxen at the farmhouse for significantly faster plowing of large fields. Yes, and we're going to get that soon. Uh, charcoal burning allows us to burn charcoal efficiently. Beekeeping, we can get an apiary. Forest management doubles capacity of all berry deposits. Enables hunters to skillfully lay traps in the forest, which gives a passive income of meat. You know what? Sign me up to that. I am very, very interested. Now, do we need to get a? Do we need to get an upgrade for this? I don't think so. But this is good. When a, when a population of a herd drops to this number, workers will stop. That is absolutely fine. We can click on people. We can see where those people write, uh, which we can see where they are. Uh, and we can see if we want to limit their work area, clear their work area, you know, set specific, set specific areas. But to be honest, I don't particularly want to do that. I'm quite happy just to let them roam wherever they want to go. Okay. Uh, this is a very cool, this is a very cool uh, little plot. It's got a garden in the back. And this allows us to construct a backyard extension, which is amazing. So if we wanted to spend 15 gold, uh, and we don't have much gold at the moment, we've only got 50, uh, we can actually get ourselves a vegetable garden, allows for the growing of vegetables, yield uh, requires plowing and harvesting labor, yield depends on the plot size, chicken coop provides a passive yield of eggs, or a goat shed provide a passive yield of hide. I'm going to take a chicken coop. Uh, we'll start the construction of that. I think that seems like a no-brainer. It does cost me a little, bit of, a little bit of cash, but at the end of the day, not, uh, not, the biggest, not the biggest deal breaker. How are we doing for timber? We got loads and loads of timber. I'm actually going to unassign a family because we really need to get some of these construction projects finished. Have we finished our well yet? We've not even finished our well. Tell you what I'm going to do just to make access a little bit better. We'll get that uh, sort of linked over there. I think that's brilliant. These are low priority. Let's move them back to medium priority. Not like it particularly matters because we're going to get it all done pretty rapidly now. But I'd like to get these two little uh, modifiers away. Approval is sitting at a measly 48%. We need to get it above 50 if we want uh, people to be happy. Nobody is homeless now, though, but we need a little bit of time to, to, to get rid of that uh, to get rid of that modifier. And hopefully we'll have this well-built very, very shortly indeed. 
and we should start to see some people moving in. Okay. Granary being built, please. That would be amazing. And also the storehouse. That would be fantastic. Right. We are in April. April is a spring month. Seasonal deposits regrow. Uh, we're going to be moving into summer. Uh, crops are going to grow. And that is something that we need to get sorted. Now, the storehouse has been built. And as a consequence of that, I think we've been given uh, a, few, a few resources. A strong militia is paramount to the survival of any settlement. Luckily, a shipment of weapons has just arrived, and you'll now be able to create your first militia banners to serve you and protect your people. However, we'll need more weapons to equip all the people as the settlement grows, either by making them or importing them from other lands. Okay, uh, this allows me to talk about combat. Now, uh, this is a little tab down here, army. Uh, we can create a brand new unit. And um, there's a couple of different things happening here. These are the resources that we currently have in stock. So we got 20 spears, we got 20 large shields, um, and that the only thing that we can make is a spear militia. Uh, it's very, very simple. Usually we require 30, uh, 36, um, 36 individuals in order to in order to get a full a full a full unit, uh, but frankly, that doesn't matter. Uh, we don't necessarily need that. And if we want to, at any time, we can literally rally. We can rally this unit. Uh, it's going to take a little while for all of my uh, for all of my people to come in to the storehouse, swing by, and pick up all of the spears and the large shields. But they should do that. At least all the adults will, and they'll take away all the spears. They'll take away all of the uh, the shields which is quite nice and that should give us that should give us uh that should give us some 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 pretty good some pretty good defensive capability and dare i say maybe even offensive capability uh, so that's very very exciting right have we got water up and running yeah we have we have got water up and running so that's looking very very nice uh approval is mostly mostly fine mostly fine Food variety is at 93%. Clothing is at 0%. We have no clothing. Uh, we can maybe look at doing some clothing in a little bit. Uh, no fuel at all. Yeah, so after we get done with these two... Well, we finished the storehouse. After we get done with the granary, let's immediately see if we can try and zone... Uh, da, 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 da. We do need a stonecutter camp. That's absolutely imperative. But I think I want to get a woodcutter's lodge um, producing firewood. That's going to be quite handy. We'll get that over there in proximity to the market. We'll also see if we can try and get a saw pit in here. Well-planned potato. And we'll maybe even see if we can try and get a forester's hut. Sort of around the back here. Yeah, maybe there. I'm not really anticipating that we will have the families required to, you know, fix all of the fix all of these issues up. But, you know, in, in due course we can. Uh, I may need to assign a family in order to move the supplies into the granary. I might just do that on a temporary basis, just so that we can get all of the supplies in here. Running out of fuel, yeah, I know. That's why we're getting the, that's why we're getting the the woodcutter's lodge. Don't worry, I'm on it. Okay. Supplies, we got ten stone. That's okay. We got some berries in here. That's looking good. Okay, honestly. No major issues to complain of. Uh, we're we're pretty fine, I think. The saw pit is, is finished. That's great. That's looking good. By the way, approval is now positive, which makes me very, very, very happy indeed. And in fact, we should start to see some, uh, some migration coming in. Uh, generic storage full. Uh, why? You've got a... Oh, there's a log in the storehouse. That's fine. I'm not bothered about that. Okay, uh, we were able to build all of those things relatively quickly, actually. Uh, supplies, we still have a few supplies over there. Are we able to store... Are we able to store stone in here? We are able to store stone in here. We just need to assign a family to it. Let's do it. Uh, no one assigned families to guide the ox. That's okay. We will undo the granary family, and we will let the uh, stone get moved into the correct place right over there. Okay. All we need is a few additional families. I think we're probably going to move forward in time a little bit so that we can find uh, some additional labor. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea to me. Aha, it has happened. A new family started moving in that is brilliant. That is going to give us that is going to give us our sixth family. How very very exciting. Uh, we can use this as an opportunity, perhaps, to assign an additional family to the saw pit. Uh, we'll get you out of the general store as well there, buddy. 
we do want people to be in all of these places, but for now, uh, we can we can sort of micromanage it a little bit. Uh, we'll get some additional we'll get some additional plots set up. Can we squeeze in? Squeeze in there. There we go. That's perfect. Yeah, squeeze in two squeeze in two plots over there. See if we can try and get one. It's just it must just be a little bit too small. It, it's it must be pretty flipping close. That's okay though. We can we can get more stuff in there. Uh, we can get more stuff in there in time. Two additional houses here. House with a garden. Two houses with a garden. Oh, you know you want to video game. You know you want to. Oh, it's so close. There we go. That's it. Uh, was that a second? Was that a second garden? Whatever. It doesn't actually matter. Either way, this is going to be this is going to be built very very quickly indeed. I'm uh, I'm not worried about that at all. Now, I would quite like to get some farming infrastructure down. A couple of things to speak about with regards to the farm. Uh, firstly, the way that it works is you build the you build the plots. We'll build the plots in a little bit. Um, we've got this overlay interface down here, and it's particularly helpful for assessing. Uh, what grows where. For example, emmer, which I believe is the seed that gives wheat. It's actually a pretty fertile bit of area. Uh, flax grows particularly well over here. Barley grows particularly well over here. Rye grows pretty much everywhere. Okay, so I mean, this is, we have, we've hit the, you know, the veritable jackpot, actually, uh, which is quite nice. Apparently, you measure fields in terms of morgans. Uh, we will build one morgan worth of fields over here and then we also need to build a farmhouse which I will do right across the road and we assign people to work in the farmhouse and they work the fields that's pretty much it it's 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 just that simple uh, it kind of just all happens automatically as long as you set up sort of all of the processes to to work uh, woodcutters lodge yeah I'd love to get a woodcutter in don't need a forester quite yet don't have anyone in the granary. We don't have anyone in the storehouse. That is fine. Okay, uh, now that we've got these plots up and running, let's see what we actually need to uh, to satisfy a level two requirement. Well, first things first, we're gonna require a wooden church. What does a wooden church require? Uh, we need food or fuel. I would almost guarantee that we need, yeah, we need fuel, which is in fact, Good timing, all things considered, that I got the uh, the woodcutter there. That's that's fine. Anyway, what does a church require? It's not in the industry tab, not in the trade tab. Administration? No. Oh, I can build a manor though. I need to get a. I need to get up to a small village first. Uh, where is it? Residential? Yeah, it's here. A wooden church. We need twenty planks. We need twenty planks, ten stone, and we don't actually have the planks at the moment. Uh, we're gonna get there though. We're gonna get there pretty soon. We've already got 15 planks that are just chilling around in storage here. Uh, if I was to assign somebody to the storehouse, then I would wager that those resources are probably going to be moved around to the correct location. Also, the farmhouse is officially finished construction. Let's assign a family over here and let us choose the type of resource that we want to plant in the fields. Uh, for now, I think wheat is perfect. We can, we can get a lot of families working in the fields. Uh, do we want to do that? Maybe. Unsure. Let's 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 wait and find out. Uh, we've got houses for eleven. Ah, this was just a little a smidgen too small for a garden, but at least this one has the opportunity for a, a backyard expansion, uh, which is kind of nice. Your storage is not quite full, but the good news is is that I think yep we've got enough resources for a church. Okay, where's the church gonna go? Probably over here. Uh, we do not have any unassigned families that are able to work on the church construction. Uh, but again, I'm not particularly bothered by that. I'm quite content just to let the game sort of play out a little bit. I've kind of tried to rush and get as much stuff down as I possibly could in a reasonable time frame. Um, but obviously, that means that we are now a little bit stretched for, uh, for resources, specifically people resources. Also, we are desperately in need of more firewood. Now, there's a firewood stall. There's 11 firewood there. So that's good. That's good. So this means that there's a the, the marketplace is working. Supply and demand economic system that we have here is working as it should, which makes me very, very happy indeed. 
Okay, a new family started moving in. Fantastic. That means that they're actually going to be put in charge of the of building the town church. Can you imagine? You imagine moving into a new town and being like, oh, sorry, everybody else has a job. Suddenly, you're in charge of building the church. Uh, that would be amazing. Uh, and also kind of hilarious. But anyway, uh, this church shouldn't take too long to build. Uh, the only sort of limiting factor is the the ox in the fact that the ox takes uh, a little bit of time to uh, to get around uh resource stolen by nearby bandits okay that's a little bit annoying also they're not very nearby are they they're quite far away i would like to go and attack them but um that is quite the distance to cover uh we can maybe go on a little bit of a crusade in a bit but raising my militia and then moving moving out to that area it seems like a Pretty bad idea. Also, I need to get a clothing stall. Let's see if we can maybe set up a bit of uh, industry. So we need a tannery. Uses uses hides to produce leather. Um, I mean, tannery is a pretty miserable thing to be situated next to. So let's build that over there. And then let's also get a weaver's workshop. Is that what we're going to need? I think so. Yeah, I think that's what we need. Yeah, let's get a weaver's let's get a weaver's workshop. Okay. Right, but get that church built first. Shouldn't really take too long, honestly. We've got that oxen who's doing a grand old job. Honestly, probably the most valuable member of uh most valuable member of town. This wheat is looking good. Also, a bandit camp was sighted. Where the heck is that? Is it closer? Oh, <gasps> it's quite close to us. I, I want to go, I want to go, I want to go attack the bandit camp. We're going to do that. That's great. I'm very excited to do that. That makes me, that makes me very excited. Okay. Uh, yeah, we're good for everything with the exception of like fuel, I think, honestly. Let's get this church. Let's get all of these bits and bobs set up that we need to get set up. And I will be a happy individual. Oh yeah, I'm going to allocate a little bit more I'm going to allocate a little bit more space to the fields. We are in August, which is moving towards the end of the season. But I think the idea of having another flax... We're going to need flax for... We're going to need flax for the weaver, right? So I should probably just, like, plan ahead. Sure. I feel like this is quite... Uh, there we go, flex. Uh, I feel like this is quite, you know, like how old-timey towns looked. You know, you kind of have the fields kind of near the center of town, and it just kind of works. Uh, that church is coming along very, very nicely indeed. Beautiful. Construction on the wooden church is finished. Fantastic. Ding dong. There we go. Uh, do I want to assign a family to church? Potentially, I do. Um, the good news is, is that we've now got church access, which is fantastic. Really, really happy with that. Uh, we're just one single requirement away from uh, from leveling up our village to be uh, to be the next. Right. Okay. Tannery. Let's get this sorted. Uh, we don't really need to worry about anything sort of tanning related at the moment. We have plenty of hides, if I'm not mistaken. We've got nine hides. That's it's decent enough. That's a respectable amount of heights. We're going to get a little bit of leather. That's good. And then the weaver workshop. Is this the uh, the thing that we need? I'm pretty sure it's I'm pretty sure it's what we need. Hopefully anyway. Hopefully. Hopefully that's everything. Hopefully that's everything I need to make clothing. Unless I'm missing some uh, critical bit of Critical bit of infrastructure here. Clay furnace, weaver workshop, dyer's workshop. No, I don't think we need dyer's workshop. Trading post, yeah, we can explore that in a little bit. Settler's camp, I love the idea of a settler's camp. Uh, settler's camp is basically something that you put down in an additional region, uh, but we need to, like, command it. Uh, we need to command it first. And we don't command any regions at the moment. Okay, have we got a clothing? Look at that, we got a clothing supply. We got a clothing supply, that is fantastic. Okay, we're ready to upgrade to level two. Let's do it. Boom and boom. And I believe as long as we're able to get those plots up to level two. And in fact, you know what? Let's get three. 
Let's get, let's get four. Let's freaking go. Let's get them all. Let's get them all upgraded as, well, as many as we can. Get them all upgraded. That is great. And people keep on moving in. This is fantastic. We actually have 10 families now, and we're kind of at the limit of what we can do uh, without expanding. So it might even be worth me zoning a few additional houses. I don't know about this plot, to be honest. This seems a little bit... Seems a little bit of a suspect plot. I think I've managed to get away with it. That's very, very nice. Uh, we have used up all of our timber, which is fine. Uh, a loss of approval. Why? What's the issue? Resource stolen. Resource stolen. That's okay. Either way, we're moving to we're moving to a medium village. Heck yeah, we're moving to a medium village. I'm loving it. My approval is at sixty one percent, which is fantastic. The market is looking good. We've got a lot of food variety, which I'm very, very happy about. Clothing is okay. Uh, there's still 15 locations in the marketplace for additional stalls, which is great. Um, why are people upset about this? Presumably because it's an in-construction thing and maybe is providing homelessness at the moment. Either way, we'll, we'll get it all done. We'll get it all done. Aha! There we go! Fantastic. Okay, we got a development point, which is quite nice. Advanced skinning? Pelt extraction? I mean, trade logistics? Foreign supplies? I'm interested in that. I'm very, very interested. Sheep grazing? Orchards? Uh, wow, that's so cool. That really is cool. Basic armoring? An armorer's upgrade enables the production of helmets. I'll take that, even though I'm kind of doubtful that we're going to be able to do it, at least in the short term, uh, because we do not have any iron facilities. We do have the ability to mine iron. Very, very important. Uh, but, you know, that, that that's fine. Uh, we are going into winter, by the way, and we only have 30 firewood. That feels like maybe a mistake. We are in October. Uh, but you know what I want to do before it gets too late in the year? I'd quite like... I'd quite like to rally my militia. Rally them to a point outside of town. Okay, there's a little little text chain there that I didn't really understand. Doesn't particularly matter though, because we have a flipping militia. Look at this. Look at look at the look at this. Okay, the way that armies work, kind of simple. Uh, there are two key resources: morale, and there is fatigue. Uh, there are multipliers uh, for both, uh, but they basically multiply together to give you an effectiveness level. You can see that we're missing 7% fatigue. We're moving downhill, so that's giving us 8, cohesion, minus 10, etc. Uh, but morale is high. So we're going to go on a little crusade. Um, it's going to take us a little while to get up here, but we are going to go to... We're going to go to this point over here, and we're going to see if we can try and attack the brigands. Now, in three times speed... Uh, it's going to take quite a while, uh, even in three times speed. It's probably going to take us like a month to march over there, I would imagine. Uh, but we are going to confront the enemy, and we're hopefully going to get a few resources from it. Uh, you'll see, by the way, that our effectiveness level is not particularly high at the moment. Uh, we're climbing. Okay, let's move around here. Move all the way over there. Our effectiveness level is low. We want to make sure that when the when the enemy attack us, we have got... There we go. We have got a little bit more... A little bit more... Uh, a little bit more gas in the tank, so to speak, because this, this enemy is moving in with a high level of effectiveness. The good news is, is that we recover fatigue uh, quite quickly, actually. Uh, let's do stand your ground. Defense is double, but attack frequency is halved. Stand our ground. There we go. Effectiveness is only at 41%, but we do have 20 troops. Let's have a little look. Okay. Excellent. A little bit of a a little bit of a messy skirmish, if I'm if I'm honest. Uh, but I've got shields and they don't, which is quite nice. And also these chumps aren't even getting involved. So I'm reasonably confident, honestly. That we can that we can win. We might sustain some casualties, but at the end of the day, I'll be reasonably happy regardless. Uh, again, there's still modifiers that are impacting 
how things are going. Wow, uh, we haven't lost anyone yet. These are absolutely terrible bandits. Amazing. Look at that. Look at that. Fantastic. We did it. Okay, so that did a couple of different things for us. It gave us a bunch of influence. And also, uh, we routed the we routed the, the bandits. Let's go to the bandit camp. Let's go to the bandit camp and immediately see what we can do. Okay. Everybody decided to... Or half the group decided to get left behind there. That's okay. Okay. Move into the bandit camp. Move into the bandit camp. Effectiveness is at 15. Fatigue is quite low, but we've gained experience, and I feel like that was pretty good. A new message. When searching through the enemy belongings, you find a stash of goods. They could... Uh, be send sent to your people who surely need them though it is your right to keep it send resources to the nearest town or this belongs to my treasury now uh i did the work here uh treasury changed by 182 that is pretty fantastic that is really really good uh now what we basically need to do is get our troops back into our region and then we will disband the unit and they will go back to their regular old sort of civilian jobs uh which is amazing I love that. What a great mechanic. I love that you can raise troops sort of like on a whim. I love that I love that they're just, you know, they're just regular folk. They're just regular people. It's a proper little militia, uh, which is pretty darn great. Okay. I say as soon as you're back in the zone, which is literally like right now. There we go. We can disband as soon as you start. Okay, maybe we need to be up the hill a little bit more. Come on. This is our home region. Uh, this is definitely the home region. Well, we can get a little bit closer to home. Maybe it's a proximity thing. Either way, I'm not too worried. Disband... There we go. Okay, don't know why I wasn't able to do that earlier, but happy days. Look at that. Everybody just goes back to their regular jobs. We went on a little mission. We did the mission. We came back. It was a great success. It was a great success. You love to see it. Okay, um, loss of approval. I, I don't care. That's that's fine. We can we can deal with that. We're we're gonna upgrade everything to we're gonna upgrade everything to level two. It's just a matter of time. Uh, what is the requirement for level three? Quite a lot, actually. Uh, oh, I see. That's the fuel. The the fuel stall isn't supplying. That's the approval issue right there. Uh, we're just not supplying enough fuel in the uh, in the place. Also, we did something. Uh, we hit a milestone, which allows us to get another development point, which brings me great happiness. We'll get we'll get the ability to to build orchards. That's cool. Uh, so yeah, definitely need to get an additional amount of firewood. Also, this area looks kind of ravaged, so it would be quite a, quite a good idea to get a forester's hut up and running. However, ladies and gents, uh, we're actually going to wrap this video up right about now. This is an amazing game. I feel like I have barely scratched the surface uh, of what this game is capable of. However, I hope you can appreciate. I have a limited time and I have tried to pack in as much sort of knowledge, understanding and variety of content as I possibly can. Uh, as I always try to do, uh, we haven't explored all of the buildings. There's a few other sort of industry buildings, uh, iron mining and sort of uh, smithing, uh, creating weapons, etc. Taverns, uh, that sort of stuff. That being said, uh, I would encourage you to get this game and explore it for yourself because you will almost certainly not regret it. This game is at the start of its early access journey and already it feels real good. It has got so much potential and I cannot wait to see where it goes. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, thank you ever so much for watching. My name, of course, is Vinoba Potato. I'll catch you next time. Bye.